Hey friends, uh, before we continue with the video, uh, I wanted to take the time to thank every single one of you for your um, positive comments, your commendation, really your support uh, for my channel. I really, really appreciate it. I noticed that most of you that watch my videos are not subscribed, so go ahead and subscribe. It would help in supporting the channel um, as well as uh, notifying you when the next video comes up. Um, I've also enabled a membership um, option. Not only will that help support the channel, but it also comes with other perks um, as well. Now, today's video is going to be focused on one switch. We're going to be talking about the thermal overload switch. Now, the thermal overload switch kind of looks like this. It doesn't look like this. And the reason why I couldn't get a thermal overload switch is because it's inside the compressor. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and show it right here on the, on the screen right now. Um, that's how the thermal overload switch looks like. Um, but it's kind of similar to this. And the idea is that it is a normally closed switch. So if I were to grab my meter and check continuity, I would have continuity right now. There is a path. It is normally closed. The only way it would open, right, just like a bridge that's closed, the only way that it would open is if it gets too hot. There is a limit as to how hot this can get. And if it gets too hot, it will open and cut the circuit. So it is an open on rise. Uh, temperature switch. Uh, normally close, gets too hot, boom, it opens. And if power is coming this way, traveling that way, if it gets too hot, it's going to open it. My power is going to be stuck now on this side. Now, why is a thermal overload switch important? Because it protects the compressor. What would cause the compressor to overheat or for it to get too hot? Uh, a couple of things. Um, it can be a high superheat. If you remember, the refrigerant is what cools down the compressor. And in today's video, we're going to be focused on a bad or a weak capacitor. Now, to kind of get an idea how a compressor uh, works, and I kind of drew the um, compressor here, but the idea is that it has two windings, right? It's got a run or main winding and a start or auxiliary winding. You need both windings so that the compressor can turn on, right? Now, when the current comes, it doesn't come to both at the same time. That is why you have a capacitor. A capacitor creates a 90 uh, degree phase shift. All it is and all that means is that it creates a little time delay. If current were to hit both of these uh, windings of the compressor at the same time, it wouldn't spin. The capacitor creates a very small time delay. So it hits this one, boom, run winding. And then after, start, run, start, run, start. And, it, and that's what causes the compressor to turn on. Now, when it comes to the wiring, this compressor here, you have three pins in the back and you got wires that go to it. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into the electrical. I am preparing a video on electrical diagrams, how to read ladder, uh, pictorial schematics, and how to really just troubleshoot. Um, as you know, 80% of the calls are electrical, so I know that's, in a, that's important. So I'll be working on that video next. But when it comes to wiring, you got a wire here that it goes to your C, which is your common. Another one that is your S, which is your start. That's coming from the capacitor. And this is the R, which is the run. So both of these are two legs of power. And let's say it's a 240 volt, uh, one phase or single phase uh, compressor. So um, this one here is your run winding, as you can see, right? Run winding. It has less of a resistance, but that's one wind, that's that's one winding there, and the start winding has more resistance. But as you can see, it has two windings. The thermal overload, which is inside the compressor, is right here. In between the common wire, which is the other leg of power, and then it goes through the switch, and then common basically completes the circuit for your start and your run winding. So right here, this thermal overload, this switch, if it were to get too hot, right, um, high superheat, or you have a weak capacitor, as you will see, what's going to happen, it's going to open. If that opens, how can you complete the circuit with these windings? Even though there's power coming from the contactor and there's power here, but if that opens because it got too hot, the compressor got overheated, it's going to open. And now power is stuck up here. So yeah, power can be coming in, but if this opens, it's doing its job. It's protecting the compressor. So 
Why is it that it opens up as we talked about high superheat or a weak cap or a bad cap as you will see right now in, in, in the experiment that we're going to do. So uh, once again, just to repeat, right, you got two windings. You need the common to complete the circuit. Um, but if this overheats due to several factors, it will open the circuit and power will not be able to go and um, complete the circuit with the windings. Um, I'm sure you've gone to compressors, right, where the compressor is, you touch it and it's really hot to touch. You're like, it burns because it's typically low in charge. You have high superheat. The refrigerant is not cooling the windings. And a lot of the times you have to get a water and cool it down and that can take 20, 30 minutes. Uh, but this is an automatic switch, meaning that once it cools down, it will go ahead and close. Uh, but really one way to diagnose this is to, if you, if you know it's open, the compressor's not turning on, when you check um, con um, resistance from start here, it will get open line. From your run to common, you will also get open line. And you're gonna think that's oh, a bad compressor. No, the safety is open. The compressor is doing its job. After it's cooled down, you're gonna have a path and you're gonna be able to read resistance from your start to common or run to common. So now what we're gonna do in today's video is I'm gonna put a good capacitor. I'm gonna put a bad capacitor. What I want you to really see and get from today's video is the amperage. I'm gonna get the amperage, the current from the start winding and the run winding with the good cap and the start winding and run winding amps with the bad cap and you will see a big difference. Okay, so I have everything already set up. I already identified my wires. This blue one um, is my start winding. This blue one goes to the capacitor on the Herm, which is right there. So I've identified that one. And then this clamp here is on the yellow one, which goes to my run, my R, and the black one's common. So this black one, if you were to follow that into the compressor, into the pin, there is a thermal overload switch that, that is in series with that, right, to protect the compressor. So, but we have everything already set up. I got my, we're gonna be able to uh, check the run winding and the start winding. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you guys so you guys can see the numbers as, as, as I turn on. And yes, that's the glare is the worst thing that can happen to someone recording. Okay, there we go. So as I said, run and start, okay? Run winding and start winding. So look at those numbers right now. I'm gonna go ahead and call for it. Okay, so that's my run winding and that's my start winding. Both windings are pulling current right now, but this is how it would look if um, the capacitor is healthy and it's working. It wouldn't be pulling a lot of um, amp draw, but I'm gonna go ahead and get these numbers and write them on the whiteboard. And then now we're gonna be checking the, um, the, the amps on the start and run winding with the bad capacitor now. Okay, so uh, nothing has really changed um, besides the capacitor, but um, this one's on my run winding, right? Run winding, this is on my start winding. And um, I did put the bad cap, right? Uh, of course, you always want this uh, strapped, right? I'm just doing it for testing purposes, but you can tell it's a bad cap besides checking microfarads. You see it's a little swollen. So I put a bad cap, okay? So coming back here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and, call and turn on the compressor. I'm gonna get my actual mic so you can hear the noise the compressor makes, like a humming noise. But I also want you to pay attention to these two uh, numbers. So run winding and start winding. So let me go ahead and call for cooling and I'm gonna go ahead and get that mic and put it right next to the compressor so you can hear. Give me one second. Okay, did you see that? It was humming pretty loud and it was pulling a lot of current and then boom, it went to zero. It went to zero because the thermal overload opened. So even though there's power going to it, it's stuck on one side, it cannot complete the circuit. And the reason why is because the start capa the, the run capacitor rather, the capacitor was weak. It didn't, it didn't turn that compressor over. It didn't have enough current to hit that start winding so it can uh, start working and pumping. But 
I really wanted you to see that number. It was at 50 something, which we're gonna write on the board. It was pretty high and boom, went to zero because the thermal overload um, opened and now it's protecting the compressor from overheating. Okay, so before we compare uh, the current from a, bad, a good capacitor to a bad capacitor, it's important for you to understand uh, two terms. Uh, one is locked rotor amps, LRA, locked rotor amps. And then the other one is operating uh, max, at least in this specific one, they refer to it as operating max current, symbol for current. Um, sometimes you see it as running load amps. Technically, this is the right term here, rated uh, load amps. But really, um, with this one at least, running load, load amps, rated load amps, it's just the current the compressor is expected to draw under normal conditions. The current the compressor is expected to draw under normal conditions. This locked rotor amp, so um, think about a rotor, right? Rotor, rotates. Um, let's say that compressor, for some reason, like you saw in the previous clip, um, the rotor or the compressor locked. It could not, it, it didn't turn on. It just hear this humming noise. It could not turn on. It's telling you that the most that it will pull, based on this compressor, manufacturers who designed it, they already did all that. They're just saying that it's going to pull max 59.5. Now, it shouldn't pull 59.5, but it's just saying if that compressor does not turn on due to a bad capacitor, it's going to pull all the way up to 59 or at least close to it and then open up. And that's what it did as we're going to compare right now. But it is important for you to understand uh, these terms right here. And really the idea with locked rotor amps and running load amps, imagine you're, uh, you're, um, you're driving, right? And you're going up a hill and the car is right here. Sorry about the car, it's not the best car. And then you have another car right here. And both get you to the same destination. At least for this example, okay? This car is going to use the same amount of miles per hour just to go from here to here because there's no incline. But look at this car right here. This car is going to have to uh, accelerate, use a lot of gas, use a lot of power to come up here. But once it reaches here, it kind of hits plateau. Now it's kind of cruising. Uh, the compressor is the same concept. It needs to pull a lot of current initially, and they refer to it as inrush current or saturated current. It needs to pull a lot, and sometimes it's not so much. It doesn't have to go all the way up to 59, but maybe it'll go up to 16 or 20. But once it's, it starts pumping and it turns on, it drops down to its running load amps. In this case though, because of a bad cap, which we're gonna compare right now, it went almost all the way up to 59 because it never turned on. It had, a, it had a bad capacitor. So now going back to this, a good capacitor. My current, my run winding, and then the running load amps refers to the run right here, right? Running load amps. So uh, under normal conditions, so it wasn't normal, normal conditions because all my panels were, were, were off. But under normal conditions, according to this specific compressor, it should pull 14 or less than 14. Um, sometimes they say 14, but it doesn't have to be right at 14. It can be 11, 12, as long as it's a little bit underneath that number. And so with the good cap, I was pulling under 14 amps, and my start winding amps was pulling 3.47. And you really don't do this, and check this one, to troubleshoot like on a call. You know, if you have a bad cap, then it's, you put the new cap and it turns on. Uh, but typically, this number you do want to check because this number tells you a lot how as to how um, healthy that compressor is working. But it had a good cap, it turned on, it pumped, 5.7, great. But look at my bad capacitor. The run winding, when it turned on, this went all the way up to 53 because that capacitor was bad. Remember, this is a capacitor right here. It had a bad capacitor. The microfarads um, was at zero. It never had a chance to if you want to put it in a, in a simple way, kind of collect that current and throw it to the start winding because it was at zero. And, and that's basically what it means, right? Your Herm microfarads versus your fan, the Herm's always a higher number. And so the lower the microfarads, I compare that to a park, and the higher microfarads, like the Herm, I compare it to a stadium. Which one can hold more people? The stadium. 
So the higher um, the Herm, the stadium can hold more people, it can hold more current. That is why you need a lot of current to hit that start winding to turn it on. In this case, it had a zero microfarad. It didn't have any chance to throw those people into the stadium or that current into the start winding. It never, it never turned over, it never, it never started pumping, it never turned on. That is why my running load amps uh, shot up to 53. And then current is heat. So you have all that current there, and when it turns on, current does go down, like we talked about with, with the car, right? When you're, when you're going up, you're gonna accelerate a lot, and then you cruise, you slow down. And same thing with, with the compressor. Um, it's gonna pull a lot of current initially, right? It might go to 14, right? At least with a good cap, and then it goes down to 5.7. Um, and then as long as it's underneath 14. But with a bad cap, uh, my star winding got no love. It got no current. So it kept going up, up, up. The maximum was 59. It didn't know what to do because it's not on. The current's right there. There's a lot of heat. The thermal overload protected the compressor. It opened, cutting the circuit to the compressor. So yes, uh, a system with a bad capacitor, um, it's gonna basically pull so much amp on the run winding. It's gonna cause so much heat to be here and that thermal overload is going to be like, uh-uh, there's too much heat. Let me open. And it cuts the wire coming to your common. Now you can't complete the circuit. Um, in the case with the good capacitor, um, initially it went up like maybe 12 to 14. Um, don't recall the number, but it didn't have to go up to 59 to then turn it on. It went up, uh, up high, just enough. And then the start winding, right? The, the, we had a good capacitor. That got some current. It didn't have to go that, uh, that, that high up, and then boom, it turned on. And it, it went to 5.7, as long as it's uh, underneath, uh, under 14, then, then it's good, right? But that's what happens with um, a bad capacitor. Um, um, you have a high superheat. Uh, these things are gonna create the compressor to collect a lot of heat. And that is why you have a thermal overload, a thermal overload, like this one that's inside of the compressor to protect the compressor. Uh, without this, that current's gonna be in there. Not knowing what to do, you'll start burning windings, or start creating a lot of issues. This one part is enough to protect the system because if it overheats due to high superheat or um, a bad capacitor, then it's gonna cause this thermal overload to, to then open up. And, and really, this is a um, another thing you want to add to your troubleshooting uh, uh, skills um, because a lot of the times uh, someone can come to a compressor and check between start and common, open line. Between run to common, open line, it's a bad compressor. Uh-uh, it's just doing its job. It just opened up because it's low on charge or it has a bad cap. In the case of the bad cap though, wasn't that helpful? If you ever go to a system and you just hear it mm, humming and then it kind of turns off, I would check the cap. Um, and that, that's also uh, applies for the condenser fan motor, uh, the indoor motor, if it's a permanent split capacitor motor, they all apply the same. So really, yes, you wanna check the capacitor if it's healthy, you wanna make sure if the, char if the system is properly charged, because if not, expect this little guy right here, the thermal overload to open up so it can protect the compressor. Guys, I really hope today's video helped you out and I will catch you in the next one.